Okay, so um, to morning, I'm, uh, this morning I'm gonna be talking to you about how we blend NIME um, data ETL and analytics capabilities with some of our enterprise systems like our laboratory information management system, electronic lab notebooks, and our chem informatics platform. Uh, I want to start off talking about the big picture. So Wave Life Sciences is based in Cambridge, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. We are a genetics medicine, uh, genetic medicines company. We focus on delivering life-changing treatments for people battling devastating diseases. Um, early in the drug discovery process, we use a, a combination of very well-established enterprise software solutions, which you'll hear about today, for things like molecule registration, chem informatics, and data acquisition. NIME really comes in um, as sort of the Swiss army knife to interface with all of these platforms and perform a range of really critical data EDL modeling and analytics services for us. And you're gonna hear about a couple of those today. Uh, a brief couple notes about WAVE. Uh, we started out as a small biotech company. We're now um, over 200 people. We are a clinical stage company. So we do sponsor clinical trials worldwide in um, some key disease areas like Huntington's disease, frontotemporal dementia, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and muscular dystrophy. You can read more about those on our website, but we also are a drug discovery company. So we have a pipeline of several early stage drug discovery programs that are preclinical and require um, an informatics infrastructure to support that discovery. Um, and as we evolved our systems of how we organize our chemical entities and the data that's connected to them, our use of NIME has also grown and, and changed. And you'll hear a little bit about that today. Um, a little bit more into what we do. Like I said, we're a genetic medicines company focused on delivering um, uh, therapies to, to patients battling these diseases. Uh, at, at its core, we make therapeutic DNA and or RNA molecules. And so this quite obviously requires solutions for several different domains. Uh, bioinformatics, as you can tell by the picture on the right, um, we're dealing again with RNA and DNA molecules. You may recognize that letter code on the top that's used ACGT, used to represent um, the sequence of DNA and RNA. Um, and then underneath that, those letters is actually uh, chemical structures. Um, so there's a real need for chem informatics to understand the individual structures, how they're manipulated. And much more broadly than that, we have uh, data, assay data that's produced around these molecules. So there's a real need for data processing and ETL uh, strategies to, to move data around and, 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 and create the proper parameters. And of course, all the analysis that's attended to that, being able to visualize things, perform statistical inter inference, and of course, prediction. This is both, we see it as the challenge and the opportunity for a company like ours, right? <clears throat> Super complex, but and at the end of the day, we are an interdisciplinary company, right? We need people with cross-domain expertise and platforms that integrate and connect um, data and that expertise. And we see NIME as a critical component of that. So this, this next slide is quite busy, uh, but we really feel it, it reflects the general paradigm of, of what we're trying to achieve with our informatics infrastructure at WAVE. Um, the picture in the middle is a little bit more detailed, but I want you to focus on the blocks at the top. Uh, that They really break down the key components of this system. And I'm going to start with the first blue block with, on the left, which is data lakes. So uh, scientists produce a lot in the laboratories, produce a lot of data on their machines, on, on, their, on their PCs. And there's a lot of data that's produced in laboratory devices um, um, throughout WAVE. Um, this is all collected in various data lakes. And, I, and I'll actually remind the audience that the data that we're talking about is not like customer data that you might collect from a database uh, of customer interfacing tools. We're talking about data that's generated through experiments that are conducted uh, within our own walls and sometimes conducted with external vendors, people we contract to perform experiments for us. So, so we need to be able to integrate that information. Some of it's coming in from cloud-based data lakes. That information needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Uh, and, and that's where a LIMS comes in. So LIMS again stands for Laboratory Information Management System. We use a cloud-based LIMS system. It's doing some data ETL, some cleanup, some standardization and parsing of the data. The next step is the electronic lab notebook system. Uh, data from the LIMS system filters through this, and this is where scientists actually 
review and in some, some cases approve that data for deposition into our core database. This is really important for um, electronic audit trails, uh, support, supporting of intellectual property filings or regulatory filings. And downstream of that, you now want to take all of this data and integrate it together into data dashboards and, um, and, and so that scientists can interact not only with their data, but combine that with other data uh, so they can uh, generate big pictures uh, for the different program teams. Now, the tr truthfully, NIME comes in at, at all of these different places along this, this paradigm, but I'm going to focus today on two. Um, at the beginning and at the end. So a lot of data isn't actually mature enough for, um, for our systems and, and needs actually some advanced ETL or modeling. So NIME's playing a role uh, in that upstream here. And then downstream, uh, data that's flowing out of this system, in some cases through RESTful APIs, is going through advanced analytics, reporting tools, visualization, and in some cases, machine learning uh, models that generate predictions for us. And we really see this as uh, this paradigm as part of our own evolution into this industry 4.0, pharma 4.0 concept, where we're using tools like NIME to in increase the amount of automation that we're trying to achieve in various practices, and also kind of developing our modern workforce, building people that have uh, and competencies uh, that, that cross not only their, their core domain in the science, but also focus a little bit on data science. And we see that uh, NIME, we think that NIME really offers a lot of opportunities in that area. Um, so now into some more technical details of what we actually do with NIME. First, I just wanted to mention a little bit about our, our NIME setup. Um, we run NIME server. It's hosted in the Amazon cloud. We have both test and prod environments. Our prod environment is running an assortment of cron jobs, providing microservices and several web portal workflows. Our NIME web portal does get a lot of heavy internal use by the scientists uh, in the various drug discovery programs. So they'll go to the portal and upload data, process it, look at it, et cetera. And you'll see some examples of that. There are a couple of key integrations for us. Unsurprisingly, R and Python um, are utilized pretty heavily in biostatistics uh, and in the industry in bioinformatics. So um, there's some integration uh, with NIME with those two packages or uh, programs. Now I wanna get into um, some of the actual workflows we've developed. And I wanna start with a workflow that's based on a particular type of molecule that we make that we have coined as an aimer. These are molecules, they're short RNA molecules that um, can induce an edit of an adenosine residue on an RNA, an mRNA in a cell to an inosine, which is recognized as a guanine. This is kind of captured over here in this picture on the right. The light blue, uh, a molecule here is the amer molecule that we synthesize in the laboratory and the dark blue molecule is the cell's mrna it has a mutation in it right that causes a, a disease and we're using the amer to reverse that mutation and actually change it into a base that corrects the problem all right so you can probably uh, and this is being done in, con in conjunction with an enzyme that occurs naturally in in all human cells called adar so we're taking advantage of a biological mechanism and using our short RNA molecule to induce this change. And as you can probably guess, it's important that we be able to monitor this change, right? To know to what extent have we caused this change to happen, how much, et cetera. To do that, we use an age old assay called the Sanger sequencing technology. It's been around for about 45 years uh, and it's gone through various technical evolutions. But the bottom line is that this, um, this assay produces, if you put in your RNA or DNA sequences, it produces what's called a chromatogram, which essentially represents the letter code with these colored peaks, right? Uh, this is produced in what's called an AB1 file. And you can deconvolute these, these peaks to actually infer the sequence. And in some cases, you'll have two peaks overlapping, uh, where there is an, uh, an occurrence of more than one base at that position or base preference. So we can actually infer the percent base editing from the areas under the curve of these, these chromatogram traces. And this is where NIME comes in. So we built an entire Sanger base editing pipeline utilizing NIME, and it does three uh, big picture things. First of all, it standardizes the metadata input and submission file generation uh, steps that were really consuming a lot of scientists' time. 
It all automates all of the data QC and edit processing uh, uh, analytical jobs. And finally, it provides a mechanism of data retrieval for scientists. So let's start at the first uh, part here, uh, metadata registration submission file generation. Um, what we did was we built an, ex users actually do their experiment and they asked for and had been using an Excel file to, to basically track their metadata. We built a soup up, souped up version of this Excel file that standardized all of the experimental metadata with built-in validation. Um, all of our terms and metadata sets that are used in this are stored in the database and anything the user enters is standardized against that errors are thrown if it's incorrect. So this has the effect of giving the user a tool to put in their metadata and know that it's, it's, it's going to be correct and, and useful down the line. After the user puts together this, this file that contains all the information on their experimental samples, it's passed through this nine workflow and the Python script that does two things. It parses that information and stores it for later use in a MySQL database. And then it creates this vendor submission form. This is the form that the external vendor that we contract to do the sequencing for us uses to actually track, um, track samples, and I want to point out that this process here was consuming dozens of hours of users time for each experiment they were running here we've we've converted it to a matter of seconds. The next step is to um, take the output of uh, of the assay, which is the AB1 file and move it through some additional processing. Now, the external vendor we contract with is called GeneWiz. They're, they actually receive our our cell our experimental samples. They do the actual um, Sanger sequencing for us and then create these AB1 files. And they're creating thousands and thousands of these files. As, as, a, um, as part of their process, they deposit those files in an Ignite folder. And this is where our NIME uh, workflow comes in. It's actually running as a cron job and detecting the deposition of new files within that Ignite folder and moving them into our um, Elastic File Store in, Am in our AWS cloud, doing some additional parsing on um, those files and storing them in our MySQL database. The next step is to take that information in conjunction with the metadata that was collected at the beginning of the process and to begin analyzing these chromatogram files. So uh, this is where another nine, uh, portion of the NIME workflow comes in. It's actually taking these chromatogram files, it's performing some basic QC and metrics on, on those, and then also um, determining the actual percent base editing at each position along the sequence. And, and I would just mention, this is an, an also an additional enormous time savings for scientists. Before this workflow existed, scientists were plot processing these, um, these files one at a time, um, and uh, what we've managed to do here is standardize this process across all scientists and turn it from several hours or days into seconds. The final piece of this is data retrieval. So all this information is stored in a central database. And here we have nine workflows, some working as server workflows that allow users to go to the web portal and retrieve um, experimental um, data that they've created, including the chromatograms or they can go to our .matix um, electronic lab notebook system and actually view and search this data within, um, within what we call browser-based forms. These are web accessible forms. Uh, this also allows them to combine this data with, with other data that's produced in other, for the same molecule um, in other experiments. Now I wanna, um, step away from this for a second and talk about another assay that's more on the um, or another uh, workflow or set of workflows that are occurring more at the other end of the spectrum here really on the analytics visualization and prediction uh, part of the spectrum down here one of the really important assays in the industry is to see if molecules are toxic or tolerated so we monitor the behavior of, of mice uh, over several weeks in, in response to treatment with with these molecules. We look at all kinds of things like activity or motor changes in their cage, breathing, physical characteristics, and body weight. And ultimately, we use these data to build predictive models that help to inform our medicinal chemistry designs and ultimately make molecules safer. 
So we, we developed a series of workflows, um, not only for, for doing this prediction, but also for processing the data in the beginning. I'm not gonna talk about the, the initial processing of the data. I'm gonna focus on the downstream, uh, the ultimate goal, which is building the predictive pipeline. Um, this does two things. It, uh, it builds the predictive model and validates it. Uh, and also um, there is a user operated web portal tool that allows users to go in put in novel sequences that the model has not seen and, uh, and, and get predictions on whether or not they may be toxic in animals. I, I will point out uh, very briefly that um, we do a lot of feature engineering. We use um, the PCA or principal components tools within uh, NIME and R to essentially build um, smarter features, break down the really complex behavioral data into a smaller number of patterns. And then we ask um, a really key question, which is how different treatments influence these patterns. What are the relationships between the sequence features of a molecule or the chemical features of the molecule and the outcome that we observe in animals? So this is where NIME comes in. Um, we're reading data out of our database, uh, performing some feature engineering, which I've discussed previously, uh, breaking those data into training and test sets, uh, performing some feature selection, uh, ultimately building models, validating those models, and deploying those models within the NIME web portal. Our model actually has an 83% accuracy, which is a significant improvement of how uh, on how we were previously determining uh, or trying to predict what was um, tolerated or not tolerated. So this molecule, this model has actually been deployed in the web portal. And in our web portal tool, users can actually go and input um, one or more molecules, either one at a time or through a, a user uploaded list of molecules into the web portal tool. And they'll get back a prediction score on whether or not it will be tolerated or not tolerated. They can also see uh, how that, that novel molecule has performed against actual data for previous molecules collected, some which have been shown to be well tolerated versus uh, poorly tolerated. So users can actually get a, a relative sense of how this is, um, uh, how, how these molecules may perform against, against historical standards. So in summary, um, I just like to say that uh, a few things that we're working on at WAVE is really, um, we've been doing a lot of internal uh, use of components. Um, we wanna get better at building and sharing those internally. Uh, so having our own internal component repository for code reuse. Um, we're also working to greatly expand our microservices framework and restful access to data. NIME is playing a big role in that. Uh, we're also tr trying to continually refine our continuous integration and deployment framework and thinking about how best to do that with NIME. Uh, we're also working to expand the reach of NIME to non-data scientists through internal training programs to kind of develop more of that uh, Pharma 4.0 cross-domain expertise mindset among uh, people at WAVE. Uh, and, um, and with that, I would just like to thank you for your time and uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Fantastic, Ken. Thank you very much for this presentation. That was really awesome. And we already have some questions. Uh, for those ones who are just about to ask a question, please use the Q&A session of the, of the tool, uh, post your questions and our colleagues are gonna help us to get them through and ask the presenter. So the first question for you, Ken, is, hey, Ken, this is really impressive. Are the workflows typically made by data scientists on your team or by scientists themselves? If the former, approximately how many FTs are you using for, for nine workflow curation or creation? Great question. Uh, uh, and, one that, uh, and the answer is that we're currently evolving this. I have a team of uh, currently about seven people um, that in various uh, points are working on developing nine workflows. We work closely with scientists, right? We don't try to develop workflows in the vacuum, although we do come at it with, like I personally have a lot of experience as a bench scientist. So I think I have some intuition and people on my team have intuition about that. But we work closely with the bench scientists to try to um, really collect the, you know, collect user requirements and, and build tools that are useful for them. Um, increasingly, we're bringing uh, people who are bench scientists into the development process in NIME and getting them working on NIME. And, and, I, and, and that's a work in progress. So that we could, it, it could be that a year or two from now, we have more people that are using NIME that, that a year ago were not. 
Um, but right now, a lot of that work does happen from the data science team. Okay, thank you. There is another question. Is Wave storing animal test data in send format by any chance? Um, storing of data in send format is a big area of focus for Wave, yes. Um, it's a critical data format uh, uh, for exchanging information with regulatory bodies. Um, so the simple answer to the question is yes, and we're, we are thinking about ways of standardizing that using NIME. And so it's actually a, a very big area of interest. Yeah, and as a follow-up to that one, there is our third question is uh, kind of follow-up to that. How does the visual aspect of NIME block node-based coding help with FDA audits, um, this kind of work? Do you use it for that or do you intend to? Do we use it for work related to the FDA? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I haven't gotten into too much of any of the sort of clinical, uh, any work we do related to clinical data with NIME, although there, there, there is some. Um, I will say that uh, the visualization aspects of the NIME web portal and the JavaScript enabled nodes feature very heavily in our certainly our discovery workflows where users are actually many additional workflows I could have showed you where users are looking at data interacting with it um, utilizing some of the you know the interactivity that you can build with scatter plots and heat maps etc to really get a sense of what's worked or not worked in their experiment um, much more than they could if they were say trying to do it in Excel but th there's ex a lot of too many examples to mention in that area um, I don't have any specific examples to share with regard to FDA data related to um, uh, any work we're doing with the FDA uh, at the moment, but um, I'll keep that in mind. Okay, fantastic. And uh, actually, we are going to have another presentation, the last one from Robert, uh, who's going to deal a little bit with, with the regulatory affairs that you might have during the dog discovery. So stay with us. That would be also very interesting. Uh, my last question to you, Ken, is that you also showed that you're using a lot of Python and R scripts. What advantage does Nine bring over only scripting, in your opinion? Um, I can work much faster in Nine, and I think my team can as well. Nine does certain, I think, some things. Uh, its ability to connect different environments together is really what I find most desirable. When I would work in R, or MATLAB, or Python, um, uh, I was always uh, uh, looking for, you know, especially when it came to uh, to presenting the results of an analysis, something more closer to the web portal experience. So for me, the sort of end to end experience is incorporated in Nine very well and deployed in Nine very well. It's a it's an added benefit that we can insert our Python or uh, lots of other languages in there and use them ad hoc as we as we as we want to but you know really rely on the stability of the um, of the overall web portal server to web portal framework um, that's it, to me it's it's the easiest way to put together a user experience that's fantastic thank you very much ken uh, for answering the questions and obviously to have this beautiful presentation stay with us backstage and listen to the other presentations too. Thank you very much. Thank you.